Hello, my crafty friends. Well, today I'm doing this video for Sherry because I, she was asking about weaving, and I told her that um, that you could weave on an embroidery hoop, and so I told her I'd show her how. It's really not difficult. Um, you can make it more difficult by making um, your strings tighter together, but um, we're not going to do. We're not going to make them too tight together because I want it to be easy for you to see what I'm doing. And I would suggest, if you're trying this for the first time, that you not make them too close together. Um, because if they're too close together, it's a little more difficult. And you might as well start out um, making it as easy as you can. I'm sorry, I'm trying to get this knot to... Okay, I think that's fairly good. And then you want to um, just come around and try to go straight across. It's a little hard to, to tell for sure. I'm going to make fairly decent spaces between mine, um, close to an inch probably. Sorry. I don't like having to pull it off of this while I'm in the middle of um, putting it on, so I pulled off a bunch and May have not, oops, may have not been the best thing to do. I got it kind of, um, all right, just a second. These are the kinds of things that happen when you're weaving, so you just have to deal with them. Okay. All right, let's see if we can make them a little more even going around. Okay, we started here, so we come down here, we want to go this direction. If you'll notice, it's making kind of a circle in the middle. And, um, you want, you want that. Oops. Okay, now when I get back here, okay, I think I messed up somewhere, just a second. Oh, here it is. Okay, I was going, this is not working out right. Now then, okay. When you get back to this side, let me cut this off. Then you tie it off too. And you want to tie it off as tightly as you can. Um, it's a little bit easier because everything's taunt. 
So I say that and then I can't do it. Um, you, if you hold that thread tight there, and then you want to come around and do it at least one more time. Okay. So this is what we've got. Okay, I've got them around about an inch apart, and then we're we're through with that. Um, I'm going to use, you could use this for your first thing in the middle to, to pull your middle all together, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing, so I'm going to use, um, I'm going to use this right here. My, uh, my warp is cotton, and my weft is this piece of weft is super wash wool so that I hand spun. So it's, um, you can mix whatever kind of fibers you want to when you're doing something like this because you're not going to wash it. You don't have to worry about that. Now you can pick a spot. It doesn't really matter where. And um, I'm just going to start right here. And what you want to do is you want to go underneath let me let's see if I can zoom in a little closer. Okay. You want to take your thread and um, I'm going to come up from the back because I am going to let this be the front of my weaving. So I'm going to come up from the back and I'm going to go between these two threads. Okay. That way, when I go down next, I'll pull this one down, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and pull this piece that I've got in my needle. Um, I'm going to pull it down here, and then I'm going to just kind of pull it around this so it's kind of tied in a little bit on that thread, okay? Now, it's not, um, you just don't want to pull it out while you're in the middle of doing this, because that would not be fun. Okay, and then you have to see where you're at. Okay, I came up before this one, so I'm going to go over it, over this one, and then under the next one. You see me pulling that one up? And... Um, Maybe I don't want to do it that way. Because you have two places. You have two places where you just have one string. And that's right here and right here. So on this side, you have one string from the top. And from this side, you have one string on the bottom. So you want to... Um, you want to make sure that you can go in and out, and you can tuck this one down, okay? So I'm going to start by pulling up this one from the bottom. And then I'm going to go under so that I'm pulling those up. No, I still did that. Okay. We're going to go. <laughs> All right. I did it from the front last time, and it worked better. So we're just going to do that. We're going to go under and over and under and over and under and over and under and over. So I've got those strings and um, we're just not going to worry about the fact that it's um, going to go over this string. It'll still work. It just won't be as immediately obvious how well it's working. I know that probably doesn't make sense, but and I'm going to take this back through here to the back. Okay. Now then, I am going to end up going under this one, and we're just going to make that okay this time. But uh, when we go back around the next time, and you're just going to go under and over every thread so that you're pulling up those from the back. And you're going to end up making this whole thing where instead of two working with um, instead of these two 
strings will become one string as far as your weaving is concerned. I hope that makes sense. And I'm going to just go on around because, um, and I'm, I came up beside this one. So I want to push it down and pull up the next one and push that one down and pull up and just do however many you feel comfortable doing. Okay. You can just do them one at a time or you can do several at a time. It just depends on. how easy or difficult that is um, for you. Okay. Now, we, this one's still loose right here, but we will remedy that in a minute. Okay. So, I came up before this one, so I'm going to push it down. And I'm going to pull that one up and push that one down. So basically what I'm doing is pushing the top ones down and pulling the bottom ones up so that they um, see how they're becoming even more, even more tied together than they are over here. Okay. And we came up, I came up before this one. So I'm going to push it down and pull that one up and push that one down and pull that one up. And right here, I've tied that one down. And then I'll pull that one up and push that one. And then we're going to come up. <laughs> it gets easier after this first round. Um, but you got to get them all tied in place first. Okay, I came up right here. So I'm going to push that one down and pull this one up. Push that one down and pull this one up. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, we came up right here between these two. So I'm going to push that one down and pull that up. Okay, now I'm back coming out of the place I went down. And so what you want to do at this point is um, push in these and pull on the string. You can pull on this back one too, but you want to get them in tight. So you're just kind of pushing them in there. And pulling from this one. Okay. So now we've got our center pretty much as tight as we can get it. Um, you can just keep going if you want to but what you don't want to do is break that thread because you played with it too much and when it looks when your green threads look like kind of a circle in there then we're going to start um, going around again but this time we're going to go around each set of threads okay so I'm going to go under this one and over that one and under this one and whereas when you put it at the first time you um, left it kind of loose and then we tightened it up later that's um if this was a, a straight loom, we would that would have been called spreading your warp. But um, I don't know what you call it in a round loom. <laughs> okay, I came up before this one. So I'm going to put it down and take that one up. And put it down and take that one up. And now, except for this string and this string, we're doing everything two strings at a time. 
And the further you get um, in this process, The further you get in this process, the wider your, your um, see, I came up before that one, so I'm going to push it down and pull this one up. Just pull it tight. And you can pull it as tight or loose as you want. If you want a loose weave, you can do that. Okay. There's where it came out, so I'm going to push this one down because you want it to go over it. Because it's over, under, over, under, all the way around. And you're just in a, you know, going in a circle, so um, just keep it going. And I came up here, so I'm going to go down over that one. And pull it snug. And you need to use yarn that you like. Um, okay, this is where I came up. So I'm going to go down over that one. And you could use thicker yarn. And it would work itself in faster. Um, a part of the fun of this one is switching out your yarns so that you get, um, so that your pattern changes, you know, as you go, you just have different, um, different yarns, different, um, different types of fibers are fun as well. You know, like some knobbly, knobby ones. I've got several different things here. I'm going to, um. I'm going to try, but I probably made this string a little bit too long. It just depends on how much of the green I want in there. You know, I could go, I could make the whole thing with one, one kind of thread if I want to. But the further you get up, um, the less your warp yarn is going to show. It shows more at the beginning than it will later because um, your stitches will be wider, I guess if you want to call them stitches. <laughs> okay, so we that's where we came up. So we're going to go over that one. Let me take this, make it longer, and maybe it'll be easier to pull through if I don't have to pull it quite as long. Okay. We came up through here, so I'm going to go over that one. Pull it tight. And you can continue to, um, you know, to tuck it in with your needle if you want to. As you go around, just depends on how tight you want it. Um, the tightness of your weave structure structure is one of the um, choices you get to make when you're weaving. You can make something loose and lacy, or you can make it really tight and um, tight and sturdy, I guess, is the word I'm trying to... I came out here, so I'm going to go over that one. Okay, so you can see how it's looking right now. I 
came out right here. So I'm going to go over that one. You always go back in over the top of the one that you came out beside before. Because you have to continue that over and under, over and under pattern. Um, that gives your weave structure and stability. Now, one thing about weaving is that you can always break the rules and do something different just for effect. Um, as long as you keep your structure. When you do tapestry weaving, um, you can do you do things that you wouldn't do. It wouldn't seem as good to do in a if you're weaving fabric. Um, you know, put in little pieces here and there, and um, but tapestry is made to hang on the wall, not to wash and wear. And so, you can do things um, that you can't do if you're gonna wash it, <laughs> if it's gonna be messed with all the time. Okay, I'm gonna go around maybe two more times, and then I'm gonna change um, change yarn to something else so you can see that how much fun it is to change your textures and the um, the further you get with it let me go ahead and cut that off now I don't I'm gonna leave a little bit but I don't want it in my way So we're just going over and under, over and under. That's um, that's basic weaving. And you want to pull it really snug, but you don't want to pull it so snug that you end up breaking a warp thread because that does happen. Um. On a big loom, you know, with long warps, there are ways to fix that. It would be a lot harder to fix on here. You would just kind of have to start over, or I'm not sure what I would do other than start over. Okay, you can already see um, that our warp yarn is beginning to disappear. And you can see it woven in almost like a basket looks where you only see the, the weft yarn. Okay, so I'm going to go down so that my, um, my extra piece is hanging out from the back. And I'm going to leave it long so that it can be woven in. We'll take that off. And I'm going to go ahead and just use this pink piece because um, it's similar to this one, but it's a different color. So you can see that you can use, you don't have to use textured yarns. Let's see. To achieve the... Um, a different look this is um, basically all one color whereas this yarn is um, plied back on on itself and so it's got um, two colors plied together okay so we've got this one and it's coming out there I'm gonna come in with this one back over here. So a couple of stitches behind that. So that I can um, I can weave that one in. Lock it in place. And I'm going to leave it that tail kind of long at first too. Okay. We're going to go. I came out here. So I'm going over and under. And you need to hold your tail when you get to this point because you want to pull it snug, but you don't want to yank your tail out because that happens.
Now you can see my um, center is move is that way a little bit, and um, that probably has something to do with how I've pulled the threads as I was tightening it. I was tightening it and pulling it more that direction. So um, if you're a perfectionist, and my hoop is squishing just a little bit too, which means I may have be pulling too hard. Okay, sorry for that. Um, all right, so that's cut now kind of locked in place. We're still not going to cut it yet because I want it tied in there really good before I do. I came out here, so I'm going to go under and over. Well, I'm going over that and then under, I guess, really, instead of under and over. And we're just going to do that. That's how you change the threads out on this. If this was a piece of fabric, we would come back later and um, and weave those ends back in on the underside. But I came out here, so I'm going over that one. But on this, we don't have to worry about weaving them in because they'll be hidden. I'm going to go around another time before I cut those off. Okay, I came out here, so I'm going to go over that one. And you just keep going over and under, over and under, all the way around. And I've only done one of these before, but when I did it before, I got about here and I just left the center and left the strings because I kind of like that look. Um, you can go as far out to the edge as you want to, but, um, but it kind of looks cool hanging there in the middle, I think, my personal opinion. We'll just go around and do a few more rounds of this one. You can put as much or as little, you know, as many as you want. Um, you can make all of your different fab fibers, um, you know, make your rings even. Or you can make just tiny little bits of one and just, you know, for a little pop in there. Um, okay, see, I messed up right there. Not sure how I did it. Let's go back. I don't know how far I'm going to have to go back to fix it. But I got... Ah, see, right there. I went under two. And when I did that, then I started redoing exactly what I had done before, which is not what you want to do. Because <laughs> then you got, you kind of, um, I mean, you can if you want to, but it's not, um, it's not what I was wanting to do. <laughs> okay, I came out here, so I'm going to go over that one. How many of you saw me make that mistake and were going, Lisa, Lisa? Let me know. <laughs> and you could purposefully, if you wanted to, really skew this over to the side more than I did. Um, I didn't do it on purpose, but you could purposely do that if you wanted to. And that would give you a, a whole different look. Uh, 
Okay, now I'm going to come back here and I'm going to trim these both off. You want to leave a little bit hanging out. You don't want to you don't want to, um, can you see, all three of those strings have a little bit hanging out. But you want to get them, get it out of your way. Okay, I'm going to finish going around one more time, and then I'm going to change to a different fiber. Came out here, so I'm going over that one. I did it again. Good grief, Lisa. Pay attention. When you notice that, um, stop and fix it. Because <laughs> the further you go without noticing, the harder it is. Okay, over, under, over, under. All right. Now I'm going to take this one over into the back. And we're going to leave a good size tail on it. And I think I'm going to switch to some of this eyelash yarn. And I'm not going to do a ton of it because um, it's got a lot of, a lot of um, texture to it. So it won't, I'm just wanting to show you different ways you can do this so I don't want it to all look like eyelash on that's probably actually way more than I need let's go ahead and trim it here okay so this one um, came up right here so I'm going to go down um, back over here with this one which will leave my tail you know, several stitches back from that one. And when you do that, you kind of have to, oops, see, I almost pulled it through. You have to hold it. And this is very slick. So the slicker your yarn is, the, um, the more you have to hold it. Okay. So I came up from here, so I'm going to go over that one and just do my over and under thing, just like I've been doing. Okay. Okay, right here, since I started back from it, I'm not going over the same threads that I did before. I mean, I'm go out when I get here, I start going over the same threads I've done before when I get to where this one is, see right here. So um, I'm just going to let that happen this one time because it, it'll kind of hide itself. Um, since it's a new fiber. Came up from there, so I'm going to go over that one. Now 
Now then, when you're in here, you can kind of adjust this so that you get a more... You know, more of the fibers coming up through there. Okay, I'm not quite back to where I was, so I'm still double weaving at the moment. Um, it's okay. All right. Okay, so now yeah, I'm back where I came up here and I can go over this one. So it'll look like a normal weave again. I came up here, so I'm going under that. And if you're not sure you're in the right place, you just check what's already there and decide if you want to... Um, See, I came, I came up here, so I'm going to go over that. This eyelash thread is a lot harder to see what you did last time. <laughs> but, um, but it's a fun texture to add in. And you can, as you're doing this, you can pull it forward if you want to. So you have more of that texture. And if you're going to use it, you might as well. And then check where you are. Okay, I came up here, so I'm going to go over that one. I came up in here, so I'm going to go over that one. And see, I came up here, so I'm going to go over that one. And I came up here, so I'm going to go over that one. Came up through here, so I'm going to go over that one. I'm just going to do a little bit more and then I'm going to go on to the next fiber. I don't want this to be a hugely long video, but I do want you to see the effect of several different kinds of fibers in here. Okay, this time I'm going to go out there. Okay, now then I'm going to cut these two short because they're the ones that um, I left long last time. And I'm going to leave this one long so I know it's the one I came out on. And we're going to use this next. Okay, that knobbly piece didn't want to come through. All right, now then, I want to come back, and this time I'm going to come up at the opposite place, see, where I'm going over this thread that I went under with the blue. Okay, I, that's what I did wrong last time. I didn't come up. Ah, no. <laughs> there we go. This side. Because I'm going this direction. You have to remember which direction you're going when you're putting your yarn in there. 
Okay. Now then I'm going to try to hold that and I'm going to go over. See this, I came up here, so I'm going to go over that one. I'm just going to keep going around. We've got to go all the way around before I actually lock in that other string. So, And this eyelash yarn, it's hard for me to see um, where I went. So... it's snug and this see where I'm coming up is where I went down with the eyelash yarn so I'm going to go ahead and uh, keep going here so that I lock that in place I came up here I came up right here so I'm going to go over And this is going to get kind of lost in there for a minute um, because of that eyelash yarn. So you just let it and keep going. It'll show up in a minute. Okay, now I'm going to go back here and trim these two. Came out right here, so I'm going to go over that string. <laughs> I may have to use this. Um, bit before I get to where it'll actually even show. Always constantly checking to see where I came out, so I need to so I know what which string I need to go over next. Because in this thing, it can look like you came up here when you really came up here. So you have to um, just pay attention. Okay, I don't know if you can see that maroon and the blue in this camera look kind of the same, so. I wasn't thinking about that that might happen.
Almost did it again. Okay, now I'm gonna I'm gonna go back down. And I'm gonna just take this yarn off of my needle. And it's um, not wanting to come off. Okay. So this is what we have so far. And um, let me get something bumpier. I was going to just do this, but I think I'll get something more obvious that's big and thick. And... We'll use some of this I used when I was showing you that little... that little loom the problem with this one is it's hard to get it in your needle so um let's just do some without the needle so you can see that you can do that too if you get if you're using something bigger than you have a needle and this has some really big bumpy parts so um, I don't even know what it'll look like in here, but we're going to start right here. Okay. This is where we came out. So I want to follow that one. Oh no, I'm going to do it this other way because I want my first thread to be not quite as huge. <laughs> Or the first round. Got some other fibers mixed up in there. Okay. I'm going to start there. And um, I'm just going to finger weave it up, down. Came up here, so I'm going to go over that one and under this one, over that one and under this one, over that one and under this one. And when you're using something fat like this, it's better to put it in up here and, um, like this and once you get it in there then pull it down okay I'm going to pause here for just a minute Okay, we're going to go ahead and work on this, and this is still sticking out here, so I've got to go around a little bit more before I can cover that up and call it um, protected or whatever you want to, however you want to say it. Okay. Now this one, you can see where it starts, and you can see going around it. With the smaller threads, you can't really tell that very much, but with this one, you can. So let's let's keep going. Let's um, give it some. If you like working with big stuff, this is really relatively easy. It just. Excuse me, maybe a little slower. And I don't know how much slower it actually is because... <coughs> Excuse me, goodness gracious. I haven't timed it to see how much slower it is. <laughs> but it is fun to add in different kinds of fibers and... 
I wish I'd found the first one that I did, but I'm, I don't know if I gave it away or what I did with it. I can't find it. And you can, you know, you can make, um, choose fibers that are coordinating, or you can choose fibers that totally, um, clash with each other, you know, whatever you want, um, depending on what you're wanting the end result to be. And with this one, I tried to, I started with the green and then this pink um, and this green were part of the same scheme because they came from a um, some yarn that I had um, dyed and spun and I dyed it um, I painted the war the um, the top and dyed it and then and it was painted in chunks so, so you would have a chunk of green a chunk of pink a chunk of blue and then there was even some white in there and it would transition back and forth throughout the scheme and so um, so this all goes together the colors go well together but the pink and the green don't like match, you know. Um, I don't want that. Yeah, this is the top. Okay. Suddenly I got confused. I don't know how why I pulled that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and trim this off. And I am going to leave some of it hanging out. It'll be hidden back there. Nobody will see it. But um, the white in this yarn is wool. And the uh, pink is um, is silk. Um, trying to think of the word, what it's called. Silk noil. And I dyed the silk noil, this pink color. It's the same kind of dye used here. It just looks different because of different fibers. And, um, and then I carded it in with this white. Um, I am, I think this was the first thing I tried to spin on my Navajo spindle, but, um, I'm not positive why it's so thick and thin. Anyway, it was just a, you know, all I did was this much. So it wasn't like I did a whole, a whole skein of it or anything, but it is fun to add in and have, um, put it into things and that's one thing when you're learning to spin you can spin little bits of things and then you can use them in your other art and um, they're not wasted just because it's not a whole skein of yarn because you can't knit or crochet something with it you know I'm you could crochet like a um, uh, what do you call it <laughs> uh, a coaster or something you know I could have probably crocheted a pot holder with this one but um, but I didn't. I just put it out here to be um, texture in something. And this is the thing it's going to be texture in today. Anyway, Hannah and I are planning to take a trip to the Wool Festival in Taos for her graduation trip. And that... Um, the Wool Festival in Taos is in the first weekend in October. She'll graduate at the end of May, but we're saving we're saving our trip to so that we can go there. Okay, I'm gonna cut this and I'm gonna let it go out the back here, right there. You can see where it comes out. And then um I'm trying to think of what I want. I guess I could just go ahead and put this there. I think it'll be fine. Let's do some of that. I I, there it is. Transition back to something thinner. And I'm going to... Um, I'm going to go ahead and come in right there. I 
and I need to hold this. You really need to hold it when you transition from something fat to something thin because it really wants to um, it really wants to pull out easy. So but we want to lock this um, thick fabric, I mean thick fibers in with this thinner stuff. And I'm going to do it kind of gently all the way around. And once I get past that, then I will um, tighten it up. Now the, um, the further you get out on your wheel here, the um, longer piece you need in order to do very much. So I probably should have made this one longer. But I was forgetting that little point. <laughs> so we will transition on to another fiber pretty quickly here. Um, okay, so we got this one there and this one here, and I'm just going to pull them both. And it will, you know, in some places it will kind of disappear back there because that one is so thick. Okay. You have to check pretty often. Make sure you're not skipping something you don't want to skip. <laughs> One fun thing about this kind of weaving is that when you're done, you're done. And you can do it pretty quick and have a finished piece and just be happy with it. Um, you don't have to do all the washing and shrinking and all the stuff like that that you have to do if you're um, weaving a piece of fabric. this through a little bit. And I'm just going to go all the way with this until I run out because there's not that much, not that much of it. I'm going to bring it out the back here. It just happens to be pretty much in the same spot as this. So I can cut this one now and that one because I've got them tied in. But I'll leave this one so I know that that's the beginning. And um, this is what it looks like right now. I'm going to pause a minute and go find something else. I'll be right back. Okay, I've got these strips here that are, um, I think would be fun to use. Well, I don't know how long they are. Goodness, I didn't realize that was that long. Okay, we obviously don't want that much. So let's find this and, okay. I'll put some of this in there. This is just, um, this was from, I can't remember what kind of kit it was, but it's just fabric and really thin strips. And you could cut strips, you know, like this yourself if you want to. And um, Okay, I'm going to tuck that back there. Now, which piece is my, okay, it's not that one. <laughs> that one's really long. Here we go. Okay. Let's take that back out. Okay. 
Mais on aime. I'm going to start right here. And um, I can do this with the needle or without the needle. Um, I think I'm just going to use my finger tool, as Pam would say, at the paper outpost. Okay. So one thing about this, you can just take a wad of it and stick it through, which kind of makes it faster. Sorry, I didn't mean to get out of frame there. I forget sometimes <laughs> where it is. Okay. Once you've got that tied in there, then it's real easy. Just go back and forth. And you could do the whole thing with fabric strips if you want to. Um, you would probably have to use a needle way down here, but um, it'd probably be a good idea to have your middle done with some yarn or string of some kind. Just because it would be harder to get the fabric through down way down there. And I just pull on it so that it um, kind of wrinkles up in there. And you don't have to. You could leave it flat if you want to. But it's a lot harder to do it and keep it flat going all the way around. And so I choose to just go ahead and let it pull in like it's yarn. Now as you're going through this. I don't know if you're noticing it, but it's also getting a lot more um, distressed, the fabric is, <laughs> from being pulled back and forth like this. So it doesn't keep a pretty edge. It gets more textured edges, which I happen to like, so I don't see that as a negative thing. If you do see that as a negative thing, then you might not want to use fabric because that's what's going to happen. So this is kind of like, um, I have seen people do this with strips of t-shirt. Of course, they used strips that were really wide of t-shirt. And they used yarn on a hula hoop and did this same kind of thing. So you got a hula hoop sitting around. You could make you a nice big rug or something. Um, I haven't ever done it on the hula hoop, so I'm not sure how easy or hard it would be to take it off the hula hoop and use it. But um, I bet there's some videos out there of people doing it because I, I know people have, I've seen it, you know, around a lot. <coughs> okay, I messed up somewhere here. Way back here somewhere. <coughs> 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 hmm. 
Hmm. I'm not sure. I'm just going to keep going. No, let's go back a little bit. It's right. Maybe it's right there. Yeah, I went under two instead of one. See? It's easy to do. Okay, I'm going to trim this off, I'm going to trim this off, and trim this off, but leave it long because that's my, where I'm at right now. <coughs> what else can we weave in there? Um, let's try some rickrack, that might be fun. I haven't ever tried to do that. We will see. We'll see if it's fun or not. This is small rickrack, so I am going to go ahead and use my needle because it'll easily thread. Okay, let's see. This is where we are out. We're going to start back here. And hold that down. See, I have to hold my, my other hand. <laughs> okay, I came out here, so I'm going to go in and out, in and out. And you want to watch it because the this rickrack is going to want to go over the fabric and on top of it, and we don't really want to go on top of it. Okay, so now I've got that tied in. So let's just keep going around just for kicks and see what this looks like. This isn't um, probably the things I would choose if I was going to make a piece I wanted to hang up somewhere. This is just examples of things you can choose because everybody has different styles and different um, Okay. Um, I started opposite what the fabric was doing and when I did that and I got to the end of the fabric, that made me go in um, where this first one is going to be just like what I did with the last with the fabric. And um, I wasn't thinking about that. So you got to take those things into consideration when you're deciding what you want. It might be a great look. It might not. <laughs> but I'm going to choose to believe it's not really going to matter in the great scheme of things with this one and I'm just going to keep going Myself a little more room here. This would be fun. Um, these kinds of things would be fun to weave and put in a little girl's bedroom. That would be fun. 
if you have a little girl who likes pink. <laughs> and my little girl's not a pink person, so. Um, so I wouldn't put this in her room. I'm not huge on pink myself. I don't mind it, but I don't love it. Um, but I would definitely put it in my room before I tried to put it in hers. <laughs> of course, she's not a little girl anymore. She's about to graduate. But she'll always be my little girl. If you're a mom, you know how that is. They're always going to be your little girl. And I'm probably going to let this just be the last layer. Um, but you could keep going all the way up to here if you want to. I just kind of like the look of it being, um, having the strings coming out from it. And, um, oh, that looks pretty perfect. So let's, I'm going to take this and go down in between those two. And then back here. I'm going to kind of sew it into that fabric there. I don't know if this will work or not. I have, <laughs> didn't think about whether it's going to want to go through the fabric. It's not. Okay, so we'll just go underneath. You've got to get it um, tucked in somewhere back here. Okay, and then I'm going to trim those two and trim this one. And when you get to that point, um, you just decide where your top is, and you can put it wherever you want. I'm going to put this knot um, at the top. I'm going to try to tuck that under here. I'm going to try to take this piece of string and tuck it inside there from the back and we just do the same with this okay and then you just tighten it up one good thing about this is that the um the outside hoop actually protects your string and keeps it locked in place. So now you not only have a weave and you have it framed. Um, anyway, I hope this gives you some fun ideas, Sherry. And um, when I get the chance, I'll come back and do the one with the, um, with the frame. You all have a blessed day. Bye-bye.